so I was going to ask a question that I'll, I'll try to ask in some form. I was going to ask about sort of when you start crafting a part, um, the way that a production sort of is adding its own cultural inflection. Um, I was going to think a little bit about, you know, the production of Caesar that we did, which is, I think, sort of unique in how specific, the, yeah. like, it's like responding to a completely yeah, specific, unique, unique and, moment. And I time, think yeah. that, and so I was going to sort of ask, like, when you're involved in a production that does sort of center itself in such a specific cultural moment like that, mm -hmm. how does that affect your preparation or how you conceive of a part? But I guess I wonder, too, like, maybe that's actually just the wrong question to be asking and, and every production that's worth its salt sort of should be doing that. So I guess I'm just sort of wondering yeah. when you approach it, or yeah, basically is my question bad? And if not, <laughs> no, no it's, a, it's, a, it's a very valid question. On one hand, there's a general approach and sometimes when something is that specific, the production that we worked on with Julius Caesar, um, sometimes there's a shift in the approach, but it's still ultimately the same thing. Um, the idea that I've always wanted to get across to people is that the play happens in the room. Mm -hmm. Like a director's job is to say, hey, I want to do this play. I've cast this play. Here are some of the ideas. This is the, archi this is the architecture of my idea and how I want to see it played out. This is what I think the scenes can be about. Here's the set. Here's the costume. So you have these kinds of, uh, what do you call them? Um, uh, things that are pretty much these parameters that have already been set before you even get to rehearsal. Um, so the actor's job is essentially to then create with, within those parameters, if you will. But those parameters are all explored, or whatever the actor is going to do is going to all be explored in the room with other actors, right? right? So the play, what I mean by the play happens in the room, I mean that because the play doesn't happen in your shower because you came up with some great idea about what a character is going to do because it may have nothing to do with the people that you're playing with. So right. the approach that I've always taken is letting what happens in the room inform me. And so I'll give you a good case in point, particularly with Julius Caesar. You know the whole thing where I started to run around with the, with the, with the pink hat? Yes, yes. That was, just, that was an idea. But then it was supported by what was happening in the room because Oscar, the director, wanted my character as Cassius. He's kind of like rousing people up, running around the town, rousing people up, you know, about this storm and what's going on because, you know, revolution is coming, change is coming, you can feel it in the air, nature is representing it, and I'm trying to get that message across. And what better way? So as we were doing it in the room, I was like, oh, I could be running around with the pink hat. And that is a cultural symbol to something that's happening in our culture right now. So that will work in the play and it will work outside of the play, particularly for the audience. So that was just something that happened from working in the room. Other choices of, I remember as Cassius, uh, I would walk over the body of Julius Caesar. Mm -hmm. Because that was Cassius trying to make the statement that, like, this man means nothing to me. He should have always been at my feet. I, this is how I should be encountering Caesar, walking over him as I'm going to the next thing. That came from being in the room. The, the position of Caesar's body, what we all went through in the process of trying to take Caesar out, and how Cassius felt in that moment with all the other conspirators, and trying to pull Brutus aside to have a conversation Brutus was on one side of the body, I was on the other side of the body. I'm not going to walk around Julius Caesar, not in that moment. I'm going to step over his body. Now, another actor may have made another choice that happened in the room and walked around the body. But my choice was to walk over because it was a quick, A, it was my statement, and B, it was the quickest way to get to Brutus, right, right. who was like five feet away from me. Why should I walk around? So things happen in a room. All the stuff that happened with Mark Antony and all the uh, citizens, how Mark Antony, how, um, how beautifully um, Elizabeth, Elizabeth Marvel, took advantage of the citizens. A lot of stuff happened in the room. And what happens in the room then becomes the play. Shakespeare's words are then just guideposts in a sense because you're building the play out of community. So that's what I started to see change, at least for me, and helped me create character better. 
because then my character is created off of what's happening in the community. I have some guidelines. Okay, Cash is a hothead. He's a hothead. He's fiery. Okay, I get those ideas. How do I bring that into a community of people? I just can't do it for the sake of doing it because it suggested that I'm fiery. I have to get that from the community. They have to, they have to give me that. They have to give me that level of respect of who they believe Cash is, is to them so that I can then play in that world. So uh, my job of creating character and the way in which I create character, the homework that I'll do is fairly academic at first, then it goes into memorization, but that doesn't even start until I'm working with a community of actors building the play. And as I'm building the play, what happens is my imagination gets tapped, right? And you start to imagine things in this world that you're building with this community. So the only thing I do prior to working with community on building a play is doing some academic work on comparing text, comparing analysis, reading about the play, reading about the character, maybe studying some other productions that may have happened. Not too much, just a little bit. And that's what I bring into the first day of rehearsal. Then the first day of rehearsal is just working with the community of actors, meeting all these new faces, listening to their new voices, what they think about the text, how they interpret, what their intonation is, what their perceptions are, and then I just play off of that. So my character is essentially an amalgamation hmm. of all the other people that I'm working with yeah. in that community. No, I love that. I think that's... Because too, too much prescribing, and this is what I've learned over time, and this happens too with productions, people prescribe it. This is going to be this because this is what I think the play means. And then you get in a room with people and they're doing something else and the director doesn't let that process go. The director's like, no, you, no we can't do that. We have to do this, what I prescribe the play is about. Whereas you're much better off letting the play happen in the room and saying, you know what, all this shit that I prescribed about the play really doesn't make any sense with this group of people. So forget that. We'll build something new. Right. No, completely. I, just just that the last thing you said about sort of like the tyrannical director who can't let go of their own hmm. idea. It, yeah. Yeah. It, it made me think a lot about this. This, you know, we watched uh, a video, a, a taping of Keith Hamilton Cobb's play American War. Which oh yeah, I saw that, and a, I know Keith. Yeah, which I just Wonderful. thought was like so fascinating so, yeah. and so profound. And yeah. so I guess just your last comment makes me think of sort of two questions that we can tackle together, or sort of one after the other, uh, which are like sort of when you get into a room with a director who thinks they know everything and doesn't, um, how does that, you know, how do you approach that? And then also, I guess I'm wondering how that intersects with this question of representation. Because I was looking at the book, I was looking at Shakespeare and Sable, and mm -hmm. I just leafed through for a couple seconds, and I mm -hmm. saw these three pictures of Ira Aldridge as Othello, yeah. as Aaron, and yeah. as King Lear. As King Lear, yeah. And I think that, and, and th those are all three pictures I'd seen before, but seeing them sort of in such close proximity to each other was really interesting to me mm. and makes me think about sort of, I, I guess, how this notion of, of representation interacts with some of Shakespeare's plays that sort of are built upon difference. Um, there's obviously some that are built on gender difference, but particularly those that are built upon racial difference. Yeah. I think, I guess I'm wondering kind of about your own experience, but also sort of when you look forward and into the next 20 years of mm -hmm. creating the American mm -hmm. Shakespeare, um, mm. how, and, and again, I'm, I'm not like, you don't need to, like, I'm not for a manifesto, but I am curious <laughs> just sort of, when you think about those plays, um, such as such as Titus or Othello, sort of, yeah, what do we do with those in a more representative world where community is the focus and it's sort of built on building up, yeah, it's about building up and not just a director sitting there being like, you two hate each other because of your right, racial right, differences. Right, right. I mean, I, to, to tackle the first question, you know, the whole thing with American Moore that, that Keith Hamilton did, you know, what, what it so clearly did for those people that really wanted to see it and listen and really take it in and be open to what Keith was actually exploring on stage was this idea of, you, you could almost take the rate, well, Obviously, it was a race thing because it was a white director and a black actor, and a white director trying to tell this black actor how to be black, if you will, right. to 
where what should have just happened is that director should just accept what that actor is actually working on and not deal with it in racial terms, but deal with it in emotional terms. Mm. Here's an emotion that is a universal emotion, not just an emotion that comes from a black person or, a, or is segregated to a black emotion right. and it's, there's segregated white emotions. No, we have the same emotions. But so let's, dis, let's explore that emotion as opposed to this director saying, I think I know what this is and I'm gonna tell you how to be a better you, how to explore this aspect this black aspect, I'm going to tell you how to do that from my white perspective, my white gaze, if you will. So obviously that was a mistake. You look at a director like that and say, well, that director should just be more open to the dramatic, the dramatic themes of the play. He was being discriminatory yeah. in a way um, that didn't have a lot to do with the play. And obviously something like that would really upset an actor. I remember... I always felt, and I, I don't know if I told you this before, but sometimes for that particular play, one mm -hmm. of the better people to have directed is a woman. Right. Whether that woman is white or black, uh, to me it doesn't necessarily matter, but that's the way to go. Mm. Because if you have a white male director, which is typically what happens, is that white male is, uh, for the most part, not really going to understand the character of Othello but we'll really understand the character of Iago. Yes. Because it, it becomes so attractive and engaging. And so there's more directing into that than there is into the role of Othello. And that creates this imbalance where whoever the actor is playing Othello just doesn't feel taken care of. Right. Doesn't feel supported. And those kinds of plays where uh, you're, you're, you're asking an actor to, to live in an emotional state, uh, in a very high stakes emotional state, you got to take care of that actor and help that actor achieve that level of performance without having that actor feel like they're not being treated well. I mean, you know, the racial thing aside, you get a situation like that, then the, the, the black or brown actor playing Othello can easily turn that into a racial situation because right. the director is presenting it as a racial issue and then you start to feel as if, wow, he's disrespecting me and it is a racial thing. And then how does the actor playing Othello maintain a level of performance throughout the course of a run? It just becomes, becomes very difficult. And that's a real thing that many actors who play Othello have to deal with on an hmm. emotional side that they will not even talk to their director about or most people won't even know about until you ask them. And I know this because I've asked some and I've had that feeling too. Like, wow, you know, I just feel like the director is looking right through me considers me of no value and is not helping me find these moments in the play and is directing me much towards just be angry, just be emotional, just roar essentially, just be a big bear or ape. You know what I mean? That's that's kind of the direction you feel they're giving you while meanwhile they're talking to Iago in ways that are very specific and very um, engaging and very collaborative allowing the Iago character to establish a better performance, and then that becomes another level of racial discrimination. Right. And then audiences are watching this thing play out on many different levels, and they walk away and say, why is the play called Othello? Right. You know, that's no, the thing. And then the guy who's playing Othello hears that and, you know, goes home and cries. I mean, it's just, it can be very, very difficult, um, particularly in that production. Now, once again, I will go back to the idea of if directors can just look at these plays and say, okay, here are the themes. Let's see how all this works out once we're all in a room working on this. You know, I think the director's job is just to cast the play well. And I think the idea, some directors really understand diversity matters, representation matters. It helps the play and it helps the communities that we're doing these plays for. Because if the community can't see themselves in the play, why are they there? What right. is your purpose to say, we're going to tell this story from a white gaze and we think it's so important that everyone else out there should watch it. People are just going to say, which is what has happened, right? And yeah. this is why some people have given up on Shakespeare. Because they say, well, it has nothing to offer. It's elitist. It's... I'm not in. I'm not in it. So why should I go see it? Why should I pay money to see it? You know what I mean. So I've been through that before. 
So this idea of shaking Shakespeare and shaking this, this cage and rattling it and saying, okay, we're going to do things really differently and Shakespeare can handle it and we're going to be a diverse company with a diverse production and see how that works. That's exciting. Right. You know what I mean? So hopefully I kind of answered the two. Othello's a very particular Othello. You know, you got these four plays about outsiders, right? You got Othello, um, Tempest, Caliban, right. Titus Andronicus, I believe that's it, with Aaron. Yep. And then, and some people forget this, but it's also on the list, Shylock right, of in course. Merchant of Venice. And, you know, there's so much that we can understand about the role of the outsider in our society how the outsider responds to us, how we respond to the outsider, and how both of our responses to each other create a level of tension. I mean, there's something to be learned from these plays, and perhaps maybe a different route to take. Can we be open to the outsider? Can the outsider be open to us? How do we establish a better relationship as opposed to an antagonistic one, which ends in some level of sorrow, right? right. Othello dies. A Caliban, well, at least Caliban gets his island back, but he goes through a lot of shit to yes, do it, right? Completely. Um, Aaron, he gets killed, doesn't he? They kill him. Yep. They kill him. Um, and uh, Shylock has to convert, which may as well have been, you killed me. Right. This, you know what I mean? So there's something Shakespeare's saying in these plays about perhaps maybe what not to do. Right. Right. No, yeah. I think. I think that's a really interesting way of looking at it, and I think I think totally rings true in a way of trying to put those four plays on in a way that is mm -hmm. not harmful. Yeah. Um, I guess again, I don't want to I don't want to give away I don't want to give away any trade secrets or give away any spoilers. But oh. I know you mentioned that you're you're going into production on the Tempest mm -hmm. soon-ish. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'm wondering how sort of and maybe this is. is not something that you as an actor are doing as you're creating the role of Prospero, but when you start to think about this play as sort of an outsider play, um, mm -hmm. and still trying to create, you know, this sense of community in the room, and build on these ideals and ideas of representation, mm -hmm. um, I guess sort of, you know, for you as an actor, and for you as now sort of like a, a veteran actor and, and, and an actor with like a long and storied career who is like one of the leaders in the room, how do you go about creating an environment that makes these outsider plays productive and you know a, a, a healing experience rather than one that leads to, to anybody feeling sort of you know neglected and also leads to a, but nevertheless ha leads to a production that takes these themes seriously and engages them effectively. Mm. I mean, I, I think it's rather simple in the sense of just going and going about and doing the work. I mean, I feel that a play like The Tempest coming out of COVID, coming out of this racial upheaval that we've experienced and will continue to experience, um, coming out of this understanding that something like COVID laid bare um, the disparities in all of our institutions from housing to banking to politics to economics to you name it it, it it touched we see the inequality in everywhere we look in human systems right so there's something that this play can say about about the healing and about redemption and about coming out of this period of time and trying to create a new path where we don't leave people behind where we don't neglect people, where we have to look at it and say, you know what, our society is only as strong as the weakest member, and if we can't allow the weakest members to become strong or build up strength, then our society is shit. Right. It's all shit. And I think that's some of the things that we're kind of learning as we've been able to look at all this disparity. But for me, the idea of, rep and representation is one of those things, because mm -hmm. then that's a way of saying, yeah, we're going to give everybody opportunities here. Everybody is going to get an opportunity to do things that they want to do because they deserve it. And when we do that in a production and we show that to an audience, hopefully there's an understanding level that diversity and representation matters. Equality matters. I mean, these things are really important. So for me, what I'm in rehearsal is really just 
plowing the ideas that Shakespeare has given us to plow. I mean, they're all humanist ideas. There's nothing from Martians in his plays, you know what right. I mean? They're all about where we are as a society now. I was just talking on a Zoom call earlier. Shakespeare's plays always meet the zeitgeist. They always meet the culture, wherever it's at. So there's always stuff to do and to acknowledge and resonate with where you are living today. It will come through in the play, almost without us forcing it. It's not, not, we don't need to be, we don't need to prescribe those ideas. We don't need to hit these things over the head with a hammer. We just need to be present in our normal lives and bring what this year has done to us or for us, bring that with us in our work. And I think a lot of that is going to happen without us trying to make that happen. You know what I mean? We are who we are. Whenever I approach a character or rehearsal, I don't change who I actually functionally am at my basic level. I am the same person. Once again, all I'm doing is playing off of the community that I'm with, which will help me shape my character. It's going to come my character to you right now. You're asking me questions. I'm giving you answers. Right. And so that's the relationship we've established in this room, which is my apartment, right? Right. We could go out into the street. It could be a whole different relationship. And so then we're going to take our cues from that. The actor does the same thing. I take my cues from other people. If ever I don't know what my character is supposed to do, I can see it in, in my other actors who are on stage with me. Or I just make it about them. I was always taught as an actor to make my scene about the other person. That way I could take it all off of me and feed on their reactions. And then that is my character. Right. Oh, yeah. I feel like I feel like it's gonna be hard to find a sort of more profound closing note than that. I just think that there's something so not just like not just informative, but like illustrative in terms of paving a way forward. Mm -hmm. Um and so, and so I guess I guess I want to phrase this in a way that's not like, what advice would you give? But I'm going to do that anyway and hope that you can sort of pick up the slack on my sort of lame question. Um, but sort of as, as we look forward um, into the, the, the next generation, um, because I really do think that sort of the post-COVID world and the return of theater to that environment is going to be sort of massive and, and yeah, yeah. a lot is going to change, I think. Both, that's what I'm certain of. Yeah, both socially and also just in terms of like artistically, I think a yeah. lot is going to sort of. I think there's going to be a lot of, of maybe rectifying old wrongs, but yeah. also just forging new paths. Forging new paths. Yeah. And so I guess I'm wondering, sort of like, you know, I'm, I'm, I wish I could have speed read these articles before I asked this question, but sort of in thinking about the next 20, 30, even 10 years of, of Black Shakespeare and sort of mm -hmm. how Shakespeare sort of decolonizing Shakespeare and taking it out of this strictly, like, you know, entitled white people's hands. Um, what for you, like, does that look like? And also, what are some steps that you feel like? Like, what are some things that you would just, like, love to see happen and some, some, things, some changes that you would love to see get made? Well, I'd certainly like to see, you know, some all uh, black productions of, of Shakespeare for sure. I mean, we've often seen all white productions of yes. Shakespeare. I mean, the majority of productions that we've seen have been predominantly all white productions. I mean, what Oscar has done with the public, which the public had started, was really forging these incredibly diverse productions of the classics, right? Right. I mean, they lead the country in that. Um, you know, where were you going to see your first black King Lear? Well, James Earl Jones did it, you know, in the early 80s, I believe it was. They did that for the public. You know, where were you going to see your first black Richard III? Well, Denzel Washington did that at the public, right. you know what I mean? So that's where I became familiar with the, the notion of you could be a king too. Right, right. You could be king too. He's king. You could be king too. Because there's a lot that happens just in the transference of seeing something. Right. Because if you see it, then you can kind of like be it, if you will. It's very simple. Yeah, of course. So I'd like to see some all-black productions. I'd love to see, you know, an all-black production of Merchant of Venice, mm. you know, because that deals with uh, anti-Semitism as well as racism. Right. Um, so I think there's something really unique to be found in an all-black production of that. 
And you know, some people say, well, there are no black Jews, which is just a ridiculous statement. Yeah, of course. Because there are a lot of black yeah, Jews. Yeah, yeah. Um, there are a lot of black, um, um, tradi- what we call them uh, Orthodox yeah. Jews. Um, certainly smaller in numbers than whites, but they exist and they're out there. So why not have a play that encompasses that particular world? And I'm sure those black Jews are, live in a situation where there could be some racism from oh, sure. white Jews against it, you know what I mean? So there's something really ripe there. And once again, Shakespeare meets us wherever we're at. So I'd love to see that. I'd love to see a really, really multi-generational, uh, incredibly diverse production of King Lear. Because mm-hmm. um, that is one of the plays that can be so multi-generational, right. like the young, the middle, and the old. Um, I would love to see like a all-black comedy of errors. Mm. Because uh, I find that play so funny and so interesting with the twins and all right. that sort of stuff, right. you know what I mean? Uh, and, but yet, I'd also like to see some just productions that are diverse and I want to see more LGBTQ uh, represented as leads, as principals. I want to see more females playing what we would call traditional male roles. I just want to see us mix up Shakespeare. I want to see all female productions. I want to see us mix it up so that we can get the point out that this is for everybody. Shakespeare's truly everyone's playwright. Right. And it, I, I think more so than any other playwright, Shakespeare is the world's playwright because so much can be done with his plays by all the citizens of the world. So this whole idea that it only exists with white males or through the perspective of white gays um, it just needs to be uh, moved away, and other people need to be the center. Other people need to be centered in these plays. Uh, LGBTQ, as I said, need to be centered in these plays. Black and brown bodies need to be centered in these plays. Females need to be centered in these plays. Right. And they're, these are the only plays where we can truly center every other, every kind of person in. Other plays can't handle it. They're not pliable. They're not flexible enough. They will break if you do something like that. But Shakespeare will only expand. Yeah. I love this notion of, of pliability. Because I think so often mm-hmm. we think about, you know, like, uh, allowing for and, and, and creating more diverse productions of Shakespeare. I think there's this notion of, like, you know, we're like, we're, we're asking the play to change and like right. but it's like a po- but it's like a positive change socially but I think this notion of like no 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 like actually like it's actually all there and, and yes. not and not doing the diverse thing yes. is actually restricting is actually restrict and absolutely it's so fa- yeah and the, the idea has to be there has to be this kind of sharing of power in order for us to kind of move forward, because it can't be tit for tat. It can't be, these are my marbles, and you can't have them. Hmm. It has to be, here are my marbles. Let's share these things, you know. Let's, you can have some, I've got some. Let's do this thing together, because if we don't, we're just going to continue to have these antagonistic productions or feelings or emotions where you have people sitting on the fucking sidelines who need to be in the game. You know what I mean? Right. So Shakespeare is this game that everybody can play, but we've only seen it played by certain groups of people, and that's the thing that hasn't been fair. And that's why sometimes Shakespeare doesn't get across to everybody, because people can't see themselves in it. And trust me, if you go to a play and you can't see yourself in it, there's no need to be there. Hmm. There's Just get up and go. There's not, there's not much you're going to learn, because you're going to learn, what you're going to learn is that you are not centered and you are not valued. And who wants to learn that? What is that? What does that teach you? It just makes you antagonistic, very angry, very upset, uh, recalcitrant, and then you won't go back to see any play, let alone a play that is concerning you. It's just like I give up on that stuff. Right. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I think this notion of needing to see oneself is yeah something that I think again in a lot of these like primarily white academic spaces is just like not even considered because either a it's like a given that you're going to see yourself or right. you could you know no the play has this sort of like vague or like abstract like aesthetic quality but i think that that 
challenging that feels really essential to me. And yeah, and I, I think that's what directors are going to do. That's what institutions are going to do. I think that's what actors like myself are going to push institutions to move in, in, in that direction because that feels right. There's something about it that we know is right when representation matters, agency matters, accountability hmm. matters. And at the end of the day, I don't want to be that or working with that institution that can't really point to examples of diversity and representation in their play schedule, and particularly for Shakespeare, and said, this is, this is the level of work that we put on, which is for our community, because our community looks like this. And we want to, re we, we are their reflection. You know, Shakespeare's plays are this mirror, if you will. We keep saying it's this mirror right. to ourselves, but yet half the people can't see themselves mm. in that mirror. Like, so what the fuck is that? It's a lie, it's bullshit. And so it's, it's really about, are those people that have the power to make those choices, to open up the aperture so that there can be more than one thing in the center of the frame of this picture? And the thing that's in the frame of the center of the frame doesn't look like them, that they can live with that and say, that's okay, that's fine. Because hmm. all the messages I've been sending out before all look like me. But yet I live in a very diverse population and I need to take care of the rest of the people that live in my community. They must see themselves. I mean, theater can help in that way, right? I mean, you've seen a play where something happens on stage that becomes life affirming or like, wow, that really moved me and made me think in a particular way or changed my mind about something. So these plays can work on all these different levels. They're just not entertainment, you know what right. I mean? And so I think some of the people in the past who looked at these places as entertainment and said, we need to entertain, quote unquote, the masses, and the masses look like this. And so we can't be diverse, or we can't have other things that don't look like this in there, because it's not going to appeal to the masses. Right. And that's just, that's, that's, a, that's a choice that was made. I'm just saying it's a choice that absolutely is antiquated and no longer needs to be made. We have to move as far away from that as possible. And the great thing about Shakespeare is it gives us the canvas to do it in. There aren't other works like Shakespeare that is going to allow us to like move into the future with diversity and representation and agency and accountability as far as a playwright because his plays are so universal. And I said, as I've said repeatedly in this conversation, they can handle so much. Right. Yeah. I'm now just so fascinated to, to see where where this conversation sits in the next 15 years because I feel like there's oh, so I much. Oh, my God. It's just like on the precipice in a really yeah. fascinating way. I think you're going to see some really, you know, some interesting productions. I think there's going to be some blowback. There, there are going to be those leaders who say, well, we tried it and it didn't work. And, you know, and those kinds of leaders are not true leaders because they're just actually trying to push a very small narrative. Right. Uh, I think there are going to be some pains moving forward, as there should, because growth kind of creates that. Growth and change create that. But on the flip side of that, the positive aspects that it creates far outweigh, outweigh the negative, you know? And I just hope to be on the cusp of that, of these uh, very diverse, multiracial, multiracial, multiracial productions, you know, that I could have posters of on my wall and say, yeah, I was in that. I was in that wonderful production. I mean, I'm so proud of the Julius Caesar that we did. Yeah. And that was a very, very cultural and diverse, diverse yes, production, yeah, right? And people still talk about that. And I really feel proud. Like, I was in that. That was really a cultural thing. Not only in this city, but, you know, at the time in this country. And I was a part of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, 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 it, and the play was better for the diversity that was represented on that stage to a New York City. That was like a magical, yeah. tension-filled, scary time. But yeah. like plays can, that a play can have that effect on society. That was the goal, right. right? Yeah. I think just one moment that I think so completely encapsulates what you're saying, and I think really like shows the like obscenity of trying to do anything different, is like that moment 
um, after, I guess it's 3-2, the scene after Caesar's death, the big forum scene. Like, I'm just imagining, because I remember how much energy course yeah. through that theater especially you know towards the end of the production when things started to kick off and the the our, our other 50 cast members are yes, 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 but i'm just so imagining like nice. imagine if it was like 26 white people and 15 <laughs> white audience it'd be like what the fuck is going on uh, <laughs> like it was like oh it's like all white guys who are cheer who are like, getting up in their seats i mean that would have probably sent actually the exact opposite message but i think yeah, there's something yeah, of course it was, yeah it's just like how can you capture the spirit of, of that time or, yes. or of just the city more generally if you don't have Yeah, it. if you don't have the diversity. Or even actually, I would even go so far as how do you capture the spirit of the play? I think what right. Oscar did was, because I'd never seen that done before with you know all the 50 other no, citizens, yeah, either. right? He just, because I've always seen, you know, four people with placards. Yep. Down yep. with you, you know. And listen, that gets the point across, but Oscar just exploded that so that we really understood it. And then to have them planted in the audience. Yeah, no, completely. You know, and, and how diverse that group of people was because what is the what is the city but the people? Right. Right. And I think productions need to be like, in one way, say, what is our production but the people? Hmm. Yeah. And if our production's not going to look like the people who are asking to come to them, then we haven't quite done the production. So what is our production but the people? That's, that's my... Yeah. You know, what is our production for the people? No, I love that. Yeah. Put that on every playbill and yes. every. What is our production? What are our productions but the people? And just every artistic director's office. Just stamp yes. that on the wall. It's on sure. the door as soon as you walk in. What is our production but the people? But I think that you know that's where we're we are moving. You know, ever so slowly in some places by leaps and bounds, some places granules of sand, but we are. I think the message is getting there to say. Let's open this baby up. Right. Let's open it up and see how high it